Explosive drama unfolds, Diane the defanged viper fires Michael and bans Nikki from Jack. In a shocking twist on The Young and the Restless, Diane Jenkins Abbott is under fire for Jack's decision to stop supporting Nikki Newman. Victor Newman calls Diane a defanged viper and hints that Kyle is scheming against her. Meanwhile, Victor fires Michael Baldwin, accusing him of betrayal. As tensions rise, Jack ends his sponsorship of Nikki, causing further turmoil. Michael, now jobless, drowns his sorrows with Diane, who is furious over the risk Jack took with Nikki. Don't miss the unfolding drama as alliances shift and secrets threaten to explode. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. After watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Diane the defanged viper fires Michael and bans Nikki from Jack. The Young and the Restless spoilers for Friday, May 31st indicate that Jack Abbott will go to society with Nikki Newman, where she will disclose that Jordan was discovered alive and placed under arrest. Jack will also acknowledge that he has second-guessed his choice and is no longer able to support Nikki. Nikki will understand that Jack must prioritize his family and won't want him to worry because they will always be close friends. Diane Jenkins Abbott will be spotted by Victor Newman at the GCAC, where he will question her about Jack's careless actions with Nikki that evening. Diane will pretend Jack did what he thought was best while Victor calls attention to the fact that it was a betrayal. Victor would argue that he now feels sympathy for Diane after discussing how much he used to admire her. Victor will assert that Diane is a viper who has been defanged by Jack and make a suggestion that Kyle Abbott is attempting to usurp Diane's authority as well. Michael Baldwin will be hoping to have a drink and work things out with Victor when he shows up for their appointment. Victor will proclaim that Michael is fired and leave, claiming there is no need because Michael deceived him. Michael will acknowledge that this isn't the first time Victor has dismissed him and that it most likely won't be the last when he goes out for drinks with Diane. Additionally, Diane will rant to Michael about Victor's ability to get under her skin and the risk Jack made with Nikki. Michael will be informed that Jack has given in to Diane's requests to not be Nikki's sponsor, but he will be concerned that this could cause animosity and raise suspicions about the close relationship between the ex-couples. Summer will become alarmed at Crimson Lights, believing that something is amiss, while Claire Grace will be texting Summer Newman and Kyle Abbott in the meantime. But Summer will at last begin to let go of the idea of Claire being his babysitter since it will just be a cute picture of Harrison outside with the caterpillars. Kyle will come clean about making a deal behind Diane's back and justify his actions to Summer after acknowledging that things are still strained between them at work. When Kyle returns home later, he'll discover Victor having cookies with Harrison and Claire. After Claire brings Harrison upstairs, Victor will inform Kyle that Jordan is still alive and that her maximum security jail will not pose a threat to anyone in the future. Victor will inquire about the status of affairs at Jabot, and Kyle will ask whether he may tell Summer on his own. Although Victor will make fun of him for working for his mother when he is worthy of the co-CEO role, Kyle will pretend to accept Jack's choice. But it won't be long before Diane gets home and has to answer to Kyle's inquiries regarding her out-of-office appointments for today. Jack will enter, declare he is no longer Nikki's sponsor, and defuse Diane's outburst over Kyle checking on her before pressing for information regarding the fight. Summer will go meet Sally in the park and tell her that Chelsea Lawson recommended her for the position of temporary creative director. Summer will revisit Sally's past transgressions and admit that trusting her has its difficulties, but she won't have the stamina to harbor resentment. Summer will formally offer Sally the position on an interim basis, pointing out that Sally has the qualifications and is familiar with the organization, Sally will accept. Nikki will tell Victor at the ranch that she begged Jack to sponsor her once more, but he declined. Victor will be perplexed as to how Nikki could ever think about asking Jack in the given situation, but she will insist that Jack is someone she can always count on. No. 
There's no turning back to him. You should not go near that guy at all. Victor is going to yell. Don't miss what's coming up for Nikki and Victor, our YNR forecasts suggest that if this continues, there may be some turmoil in their marriage. Stay tuned, as spoilers for The Young and The Restless indicate that Victor will not give up on keeping Jack at a distance. The next update for today. Ashley's terrible night, did Alan's unsettling twin brother set off did? Spoilers for The Young and The Restless indicate that some viewers have had doubts about Alan Loran when he first appeared on the show. It's often difficult to determine a character's personality with certainty when they first appear unless you know them well. Alan, though, has undoubtedly put forth a lot of effort to assist Ashley Abbott in identifying the trauma's origin. Would Alan not want the cause of Ashley's dissociative identity disorder to remain buried if he had done something to set it off? Alternatively, there could be an alternate theory that maintains Alan's integrity as a kind man while acknowledging his significant role in Ashley's situation. Ashley discussed with Alan in the May 30th episode of YNR calling him to arrange a meeting following her highly publicized altercation with Tucker McCall. Alan claimed he was in Florence at the time, although that was the first week of September. If that's the case, Alan wasn't the one who spoke with Ashley that evening or took the call. If Alan was speaking at a conference, he might even have some video footage to show that he was nowhere near Paris. This brings us to Tucker's peculiar meeting with a man who had a striking resemblance to Alan, but with a somewhat more casual dress sense. That guy blew straight past Tucker in the May 30th show, seeming confused as if he was meeting him for the first time. Could Ashley's trauma be the result of Alan's eerie twin brother? Alan may have a brother who is exactly like him and who may be obsessed with Alan's patience and way of life. It's possible that Alan's twin pretended to be his brother, the psychologist, and developed a strong romantic interest in Ashley. Perhaps Ashley has been able to block out the possibility that this guy assaulted her or did something else to hurt her. The fact that Alan appeared to be in Florence on that important night and that there appears to be another character who like Alan are the signs that lead in that way. It makes logical that Ashley had a mental breakdown while Alan was away because his twin brother, or at the very least, a lookalike, took his place. Stay tuned for details on Alan's twin's possible role in Ashley's did trigger. Spoilers for the young and the restless indicate that he will assist Ashley in learning some startling information. The next update for today. Harrison's bicycle mishap while Claire was watching, Summer fires nanny due to son's injuries? According to teasers for the young and the restless, Summer Newman is attempting to have some faith in Claire Grace because it appears like everyone else believes she has changed her life. Summer had set aside her own concerns to enable Harrison Abbott to use Claire as a test nanny, after all, the man clearly adores her. But maybe, deep down, Summer is just waiting for Claire to fall short. Since it's evident that Summer still struggles with trust, any hint of problems could quickly escalate into a fight. This leads us to a possible clue found in the episode from May 30th. Summer and Kyle Abbott discussed how fast Harrison had picked up the skill of riding a bicycle as they stood outside supporting him. Of all, there has to be a reason that Harrison is picking up bike skills at the same time as Claire is taking over as nanny. YNR admitted that Summer was anxious that Harrison might move too quickly and revealed that he might have been a little too cocky during the process. All of this seems like a prescription for trouble, doesn't it? According to our predictions, Harrison may ride his bike too fast while Claire is watching and end up falling off. Harrison might wind up hurt, in which case Claire might need to address a situation quickly. Harrison might, of course, just scrape his knee or sustain another small injury that comes with growing up. Kyle might then argue that it's not a huge deal, particularly if Claire expertly tends to Harrison's wounds. To Kyle's mind, it could be further evidence that Claire is aware of what to do in such circumstances. Conversely, Summer could lose her cool and claim that Claire wasn't paying enough attention. 
Perhaps Summer will criticize Claire for allowing Harrison to suffer harm while under her supervision and argue that the entire nanny thing isn't going to work out. Claire may face severe consequences if she makes her first mistake because Summer will undoubtedly be perceptive to even the smallest detail that could go wrong. Keep checking back for updates on any accident news and how it might impact Harrison's care going forward. According to spoilers from The Young and the Restless, Kyle and Summer might argue about Claire's role once more. The next update for today. Ashley's dark turn on Young and Restless may portray unimaginable horror and a haunting feeling of deja vu. On Young and Restless, it was a don't blink or you'll miss it moment, but it also gave us shivers. And one that pinpointed the precise agony Ashley would be about to relive should her memories of Paris suddenly come flooding back. Naturally, we're referring to the five-second scenario where Tucker, having fled his altercation with Audra behind him, is strolling around Paris when he meets Dr. Allen by coincidence. Having chatted with the man several times in Genoa City, McCall recognized him and greeted him with a mix of astonishment and friendliness. What was stunning, though, was what came next. Allen gave Tucker a somewhat irritated glance, did not greet him back, and continued on. What was going on with Alan, we wondered. But we soon discovered. In Paris, or Denmark, as it were, something seemed off. Would he have brushed Tucker off in such a way? Alan had left Ashley's flat to head home and change. He would have been on his way back at that point. Why was he giving McCall the cold shoulder now after he was perfectly friendly in Genoa City? We believe he would have spoken even if he had been annoyed that Tucker had followed Ashley abroad. The dude has been exceedingly courteous. Something about his appearance also didn't seem quite right. This Alan was dressed in a black leather jacket, which is a common worldwide soap opera costume for villains or characters who have become evil. However, there was more. Alan had taken off his black leather jacket when he got back to Ashley's flat. Did he leave it in the corridor? When Ashley and Alan began a more intense endeavor to access her memories from the purported traumatizing event, things took an even odd turn. Alan told Ashley up front that it didn't happen when she mentioned that she had spoken to him over the phone and made plans to meet with him that particular night. Ashley was shocked to hear that he hadn't actually told her he would see her again after their last session and that he was in Florence at the time. If Tucker's earlier interaction hadn't happened, we would still be wondering if Alan, who we've been observing with suspicion, was gaslighting his buddy and patient. When you examine it, a completely different and horrifying scenario emerges, Alan is the doppelganger or evil twin of someone else. That would account for Tucker's peculiar experience and Ashley's contact with someone she thought was Alan, even though he was actually abroad. We have a horrible hunch that it will also account for her severe trauma. Was Ashley attacked by the wicked twin brother of Alan? Maybe even give her a rape? Oh, the terror. Sadly, our beauty. Even worse, Ashley has previously had run-ins with twin brothers. Does anyone recall that Blade, her late husband, slept with her brother Rick, a nasty boy? What are the chances that in her lifetime she will have to cope with two sets of bad and good twins? Just on a soap opera. The next update for today. The Young and the Restless Allen Problem In the Paris streets, Tucker met Allen on Thursday, May 30th, in an episode of The Young and the Restless. Tucker was not spoken to by the doctor, though. Why did that occur? Recurring events. In Genoa City, Alan and Tucker had conversations. Alan was always quite friendly with Tucker during them. Though it seems clear that the two men weren't buddies, we can't believe Alan wouldn't at the very least say hello to Tucker. But Tucker appeared shocked to find Alan in Paris. Alan only looked annoyed, didn't say anything, and turned to leave. That seemed strange. But what was even stranger was that Alan was talking to Ashley and Tracy in Ashley's flat while wearing a suit. 
he didn't have on the strange black leather jacket he was wearing when he was out and about with Tucker. Then, just before the show concluded, Alan returned to the flat and was dressed as usual. It was almost as if Alan hadn't even acknowledged Tucker. Is he pursuing a goal? Is he, like Ashley, suffering from did? Is he a doppelganger or Alan's demonic twin? How do you feel? Tell us in the comments section below. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.